Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the NTN Hockey Channel. Today we've got a few things to discuss, including a couple of entry level contract signings, some more injury updates, a look at some of the game 5s that have happened so far in the playoffs, and some trade rumors involving Alex Debrinkit, and some goalies who we could see dealt in the offseason. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello and welcome to another video here at the NTN Hockey Channel. I'll kick things off today with a couple of entry level contract signings that have happened from around the NHL. Uh, we'll start with the Vegas Golden Knights, as they have signed goalie Jesper Vickman to a three year entry level contract that will have an average annual value of $858,000 and it will begin at the start of next year. Now, for Vickman, he was a 2025th rounder of the Golden Knights, so a little bit of a late draft pick. Uh, Vickman looks like a really good goaltender. He's been playing over in the WHL over the past couple of seasons. Actually been putting up some pretty decent numbers. Having a 3.05 goals against average and a 903 save percentage in 35 games last year. This year, a little bit worse, but still pretty good. Putting up a 3.29 goals against average and a 903 save percentage in 45 games. So, still, Vickman looks really good for the Golden Knights. I would expect him to continue to do really well over in the WHL. Probably going to need another year or two in the WHL. And then probably going to need another year or two in minor. So it's probably still th to three to four years before he starts contending for a spot. But I do think, in time, Vickman could definitely make a backup role. He definitely looks like a really good goaltender and could definitely do that. So, in my opinion, I think Vickman, really good signing for the Golden Knights. And it increases their goalie depth. Like I said, uh, they got guys like Thompson, Hill, Leonard, Quick right now. So they, they're stockpiled in net right now. But... In time, I do think Vickman could definitely be like a good backup goaltender for the Knights, but he's definitely going to need some more development over in juniors as well as in the minors. So, still a little while away, but good signing for the Golden Knights to get another goaltender under contract. Uh, speaking of goaltenders, the San Jose Sharks has signed 2018 fifth round pick Magnus Corona to a two year entry level contract that will have an average annual value of $68,000, and the deal will begin at the beginning of next year. Now, Corona was originally a Tampa Bay Lightning draft pick. Drafted by Tampa Bay, he was traded to the San Jose Sharks for defenseman Frederick Clayson at the 2021 trade deadline, so the short season. And he's been playing the last couple of seasons. He's actually been doing quite well. Had a 2.11 goalsley and Savage and a 9.11 save percentage in 37 games last year. Played a little bit less games this year, but had a bit better numbers, putting up a 2.19 goalsley and Savage and a 9.16 save percentage in 32 games. So Corona looks like a he could eventually be a good goaltender. Probably going to need a year or two in the minors, but I think San Jose is still looking for the goaltender of the future. I'm not sure if Corona is definitely going to be that. But I think in time, he could definitely be at least a backup, maybe a tandem goaltender for the Sharks. It, he looks really good, and he's been playing over in college and looked really well over there. So, good to see Corona get signed. Spent a lot of time over in college, so good to see him finally get his entry-level contract. And hopefully he can eventually make the NHL for the San Jose Sharks. Next, over with another goaltender, as the Chicago Blackhawks signed Drew Comesso to a three-year entry-level contract that have an average annual value of $925,000, and they'll begin at the start of next year. Now, for Comesso, he was drafted in the second round of the 2020 draft for the Hawks. Uh, he's looked really good for them. He's been playing over in college over the past couple of seasons, been doing quite well in college. Had 2.52 goals against average and a 9.14 save percentage in 28 games last year. This year... Pretty good numbers again, with a 2.46 goals against average and a 9.13 save percentage in 34 games. So for Comesso, he looks like a really good goaltender. He could definitely be like a tandem goaltender, maybe even a starter in the future for the Chicago Blackhawks. He does look that good, so good to see him get under contract. He'll probably need a year or two, maybe three years in minors. He's definitely going to need some more time developing, but I think in time, Comesso could definitely challenge for a starter role in the Chicago Blackhawks organization. So... Definitely going to be interesting to see, but also Comesto, another really good goaltending signing, this one by the Chicago Blackhawks. And finally, with the Anaheim Ducks, they signed defenseman Jackson Lacombe to a two-year entry-level contract that have an average annual value of $925,000, and the deal began before the Anaheim Ducks finish up the regular season. Now, for Lacombe, uh, he is a really good defenseman. He's been playing over in juniors over the past couple of years after being taken by the Ducks. In the second round of the 2019 draft, he's been looking really good. Uh, he put up three goals, 30 points in 39 games last year. This year, a bit better, putting up nine goals and 35 points in only 37 games. So, Lacombe looked really good. Uh, before the Anaheim Ducks did finish up their season, Lacombe actually got into a couple of NHL games, putting up no points in the Ducks' last two games of the season. So, 
wasn't really able to generate much offense, but still, he was able to show that he can be a good defender. Now, I think he'll probably start the year in the minors next year, probably spend most of the next year in the minors. But I think in time, Lacombe could definitely be a good third pair defenseman, maybe even second pair defenseman. So another great signing for the Anaheim Ducks, and I expect in time, Lacombe should definitely be a really good forward for Anaheim. But definitely, good to see Lacombe get signed by the Ducks. He should be a good third, second pair defenseman in a couple of years' time. And then good to see goalie Vickman in Vegas, Corona in San Jose, and Comesso in Chicago all get signed. As I think all three goalies have a shot at at least being backups with Comesso probably being the most likely to be a starter out of all three of them. But good to see all these guys get signed, and hopefully there's some more to come over the next couple of days. Next, we'll go over to the playoff update part of the video. Now, since our last video, there hasn't been really been much. Three of the games have still not even reached Game 5 yet. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vegas Golden Knights will have a chance to close out the series later today, as they both still lead their series 3-1. And the Devils and Rangers will fight to see who goes back to New York with a 3-2 series lead later tonight. So those three still haven't even reached Game 5. But there have been five games that have reached their Game 5. So we'll start with the Carolina Hurricanes New York Islanders. Now this was a really close game. Uh, the Islanders are playing for their playoff lives down 3-1 to the Carolina Hurricanes. The Hurricanes are trying to be the first team to close out a series and move on to Round 2. Uh, started really good for the Islanders. They were able to get a 1-0 lead. They have jumped out to a 2-0 lead. The Carolina Hurricanes were able to get one back, cut the lead to 2-1. Then this goal here that I'll show you from Matthew Barzell gave the Islanders a 3-1 lead. And even though the Carolina Hurricanes scored one in the third to make a 3-2 game, this goal wound up being the game winners. The Islanders do hold on and beat the Carolina Hurricanes 3-2 as they keep their season alive and send it back to New York. So for the Islanders, really, really great game. Sorokin definitely played outstanding. They were able to get enough offense to outlast the Carolina Hurricanes, and they're able to send it back to New York. So that's a really, really great result for the Islanders. They now go back to New York, down 3-2, so I still think this is the Carolina Hurricanes series to lose, but it's now a possibility we could end up seeing a Game 7. And it's not that far out of the question. So, good win by the Islanders, good play by guys like Sorokin, Barzell, good offensive play for them, and they're able to send it back to New York for a Game 6 on Friday. The Dallas Stars started fast, started hard, uh, got a couple of early power play goals to put themselves up 2-0, and they really never looked back as Jake Ollinger shut the door in the Minnesota Wild, and the Stars were able to get away with a 4-0 victory. So that series was 2-all. Stars now have a 3-2 series lead thanks to Ollinger and their lethal power play unit. So good for the Stars to get the win. I did say Stars would win in 6 they're now heading back to the Wild with a chance to end the series in six. So, good to see the Stars do that. It's going to be interesting to see if they'll be able to end it tomorrow and able to move on to the next round. But, good to see the Stars wound up winning that game. But, it's really good to see the Stars get that win, have Andre have another great performance, and have them go with a chance to end the series back in Minneapolis. As for the Edmonton Oilers and LA Kings, this has been a really tight series. Three overtime games. One two-goal victory for the Oilers. Uh, that series was two all going back to Edmonton. And Edmonton just decided to take control of the series. They scored really fast. Uh, by the fourth goal, LA decided to pull Jonas Caprasalo. And the final score wound up being 6-3 Oilers. So they double up the LA Kings. They're able to take the series lead. So good news for the Oilers. They're going to head back to LA with a shot to end the series. But looking at how this series has been playing out, I'm... Not sure if they will be able to. I did say Oilers should win. I did say in seven. I'm still sticking to that. I do think the Oilers will win the series, but I also think it will be in seven. I mean, this series has gone back and forth. I just don't think the Oilers can solidify their spot in the next round in game six. I definitely think LA is going to have a really good shot at trying to send this one back to Edmonton. So while I think it's really great for Edmonton to get the series lead and go back to LA with a chance to end the series, I just think oh, this series looks like it's going to end in seven. But good to see Oilers take the advantage and get that 3-2 series lead over with the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers. This was a really tight game back in Boston. Uh, the Panthers had 1-0, 2-1, and 3-2 leads in the game. And each time Florida scored, Boston found a way to get back to levels. And they wound up going to overtime. But okay, I'll show you a clip here. Allmark was trying to play the puck, uh, wound up getting it to Carter Verhage in overtime. Verhage found Kachuk, and Kachuk backhands it into the open net for a great overtime goal. Uh, quite surprising, but the Panthers were able to get the victory in Boston and send this one back to Sunrise, Florida for a game six. So Florida definitely showed that they're not going to be taken out so easily. 
I did say Bruins in six, so the Bruins will have a chance to go back to Florida to have another shot at ending this series after they're up 3-1 entering that game. But Florida definitely showed that they're not going to go down without a fight. So great win by Florida to get the overtime victory and are able to push to six, hoping to push it back to F Boston for a game seven. But definitely really great killer instincts from Florida last night to not give up a lead at any point in the game. And they'll hope to win game six in Florida and send it right back to Boston for game seven. And lastly, here was the Seattle cracking the Colorado Avalanche. I think this is a pretty much the biggest stunner of all the game five so far. But the Kraken were able to get to a one nothing lead in the second. Uh, the Avalanche were able to nod it back up. But then this goal here from youngster Ty Cartier, who was playing in his first ever NHL game, was an undrafted prospect for the Seattle Kraken, playing his first ever NHL game in the playoffs, wound up scoring his first career NHL goal to give the Kraken a 2-1 lead in the game. The Kraken would add one more to make it a 3-1 game. Uh, the Avs would get a very late goal to cut the lead to 3-2, but that's as close as they would get as the Kraken surprised the Avalanche being them in Colorado, 3-2, and sending this series back to Seattle with a chance for the Kraken to end the series. Now, I know I picked the Seattle Kraken to get out of the first round. I thought they had the most likely chance of upsetting out of any of those teams who would probably be considered an upset. And it's actually a possibility now they could do it. So I'm quite surprised that I could actually be right there. Uh, the Kraken have been playing the Colorado Avalanche extremely well. And they show that they can contend with the defending Stanley Cup champs. So going into Friday, they'll have a shot at ending the series. I would not have surprised me at all if the Avalanche were able to go into Seattle and send it back to Colorado for Game 7. I did say I can win in 7, but I think if it goes back to Colorado, it's anyone's series. So it's definitely going to be a really interesting Game 6 tomorrow. But quite surprising that the Kraken will actually have a shot to end the defending Stanley Cup champion season in Seattle. So definitely, we got... All of those series is right now. So we got Game 5s tonight between the Tampa Bay Lightning and Toronto Maple Leafs, Devils and Rangers, and Jets and Golden Knights. And then we'll have Game 6s tomorrow night where the Kraken, Stars, Hurricanes, and Bruins will all have a shot to end their series. On Saturday, the Oilers will have a chance to end their series. And whoever wins tonight's Devils-Rangers game will have a shot to end their series. And if the Jets and or the Lightning are able to win their game and send this one a 6, then the Leafs and Golden Knights will have another chance to end the series on Saturday. And then Sunday and Monday are possibility game seven. So if any of those series wind up going seven, they will be happen on Sunday or Monday. So by the time we have our next video on Tuesday, all the series will be done and we'll have our second round ready to be previewed. So definitely going to be interesting to see, but I'm definitely going to talk about that on Tuesday and give you my predictions as to who will win the second round series. But definitely going to be interesting to see. So at the current moment, Oilers, Kraken, Stars, Canes, Bruins up 3-2 in their series, while Devils Rangers are still 2-all, and then the Leafs and Knights are up 3-1 with chances to end their series in 5 tonight. So still really interesting, but definitely been really, really entertaining hockey in the playoffs so far this year. Next, we go over to the injury update part of video. Now, there's been a little bit less injuries to talk about over the past couple of days, but at the current moment, there have been a couple. Uh, for the Colorado Avalanche, they were able to get Jack Johnson back from his lower body injury. Johnson suffered the injury just before the playoffs started, had missed all the first four games for the Avalanche, but with Kale McCarr out due to a one-game suspension, he was able to get into game action and help the Avalanche in yesterday's Game 5, so good to see him get back into game action. Meanwhile, Josh Manson, after that game, has suffered an undisclosed injury and is going to be out for an unknown period of time. So not great news for Manson. He's a really good top four defenseman and really helped them last year when they made the run to the Stanley Cup final. So if he's not able to go for game six against the Kraken, that's going to be a big blow to their team. Uh, Jared McCant. Now I'll show you a clip here. All videos are created to Sportsnet. But as you can see in this clip here, Jared McCann had shot the puck, the whistle had blown, and then Kill McCarr had laid a pretty bad hit on Jared McCann. McCann missed last night's game due to his injury, and while McCarr was suspended for one game due to that injury, McCann currently has an undisclosed injury and he's going to be out for no period of time. So the Kraken were able to win without him in yesterday's game. Hopefully he's not out for too overly long period of time, but as you can see with this hit, it was pretty bad. So hopefully he can recover in the not-too-distant future. Next in the Boston series, uh, Patrice Bergeron for the Boston Bruins was able to get back into game action in game five. He had missed about two weeks in all the first four games of the series due to his injury, but was able to get back and center that top line in game five. So 
Good news for the Boston Bruins to get their top line center back. Krejci is still out, but it is really great news to see Boston get Bergeron back. Uh, with the Florida Panthers, after missing Game 4 due to undisclosed injuries, both Aaron Ekblad and Anthony Duclair got back into game action and were able to play for the Florida Panthers. So, good news there. Duclair's a really good top 6 forward. Ekblad's the Panthers' best defenseman. So, great news to see those two guys get back. And those two guys getting back was probably a huge reason as to why the Panthers were able to push a Game 6 against Boston. But the Panthers did lose one of their good forwards as Ryan Lomberg suffered an upper body injury and is currently day-to-day, -day, missing yesterday's game due to it. So, not great news for Lomberg. Uh, definitely really bad news for him. He's a really good bomb six forward, so not great news to lose him for an overly long period of time. Hopefully, he can return in the not-too-distant future, but just really bad news for the Flair Panthers to lose Lomberg. Then, ahead of tonight's game, Nikolai Ehlers, who had missed the last week of the season due to an upper body injury and has missed all four games against the Golden Knights, has had his injury updated and is now currently a game time decision for tonight's game action against the Golden Knights. So that's good news for the Jets. Hopefully Ehlers can go. Sheffley's most likely not going tonight. Morrissey's not going tonight. So getting Ehlers back into that lineup would be really good with the Jets facing elimination. So hopefully he is able to get in. But just really great news to see that he's a possibility for tonight's game action. And lastly here we have a couple of injuries for players that are not on playoff teams. Uh, Calgary Flames for Andrew Mangiapani has suffered a shoulder injury and is going to be out for an period of time. Flyers defenseman Igor Zamula has suffered a shoulder injury and is going to be out for an period of time. And Penguins defenseman Jan Ruta has suffered an abdominal injury and he's going to be out for the next two months. So with these guys not getting playoff teams, uh, they're going to have the offseason to recover from the injuries to recover before training camp. So that gives them about three to four months to recover from the injuries. So all should be fine before the season begins next year, but just really bad news to see Manjipani, Zamula, and Ruta all go down with injuries, but definitely. That's the injury update for now. That's all we're going to get to today. And lastly here, we go over to trade up rumor part of the video. Now we'll start with the rumors around National Predator Center, Matt Duche. Now, over the past little while, there's been some talk that with the Jackets looking for a top six center to help with their team right now, uh, there's some talk they could be looking at a guy like Matt Duchesne. Now, Duchesne's actually played in Columbus before. Uh, back a couple of years ago, Duchesne was dealt to the Columbus Blue Jackets by the Ottawa Senators before their trade deadline. And he was a big piece for Columbus making the playoffs that year and then helping them wind up upsetting the Tampa Bay Lightning in four games in that really, really bad series for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, Duchesne's actually played before in Columbus, so it would not be surprising if the Jackets had interest to bring him back. Uh, that was like three or four years ago, though. So he's been in Nashville over the past couple of seasons, uh, signed a seven-year, $8 million deal in free agency, currently has three years left on that deal, and hadn't been playing overly well in Nashville to start his stint with the Predators, but over the past couple of years, he hasn't done overly bad. Put 43 goals in a career-high 86 points in 78 games last year. So last year, by far his better season, not only with Nashville, but period. This year, a little bit of a down year. Uh, not too bad of a season, putting up 22 goals and 56 points in 71 games, but still not one of his better seasons in the NHL. So definitely had a great season last year, a little bit of a down year this year, but he's definitely shown that he can once again be a really good lethal top six option for an NHL squad. Now he does have a steep cap hit of $8 million for the next three years, so definitely going to be interesting to see if the Jackets will be willing to take on the full cap hit. But there's also some talk that in return, the Jackets might be willing to trade a guy like Jack Roslevic. Roslevic's going to be entering the final year of his deal at $4 million. And with them trying to upgrade their starting position, they might be willing to move Roslevic. So, could we see a Dushin roslevic swap? Maybe not one for one, but I think it's quite possible we could. I mean, there's been a lot of talk around Kevin Hayes being dealt to the Jackets. I don't know what that would do if Dushin winds up being dealt to the Jackets instead of Hayes. But there's definitely seems to be a lot of speculation that the Jackets are going to try and improve that center position for the time being. I know they have a guy like uh, Cole Sillinger, who could be a top six f center in the future, but for now he's most likely like a third line center. So I think eventually they could have a guy like Cole Sillinger be their top line center, but for the time being they need someone who they can play with Line and Goudreau so they can push for a playoff spot next year. So could Duchesne be traded by the Preds? I think it's definitely a possibility. Duchesne's a pretty good top line center, 
who's definitely making a little bit too much for what he produces, but maybe playing with a couple of guys like Goudreau and Line on a top line in Columbus, he could actually do quite well. So it would not surprise me at all if Duchesne does wind up getting dealt to Columbus, but it's definitely another interesting name. We already know we should watch out for Hayes to Columbus, so now it's another name that's been linked to Columbus with Duchesne. So could Duchesne be dealt by a Preds? I think it's possible, especially given the fact that they're going to try and probably move some more cap space out, but... Definitely going to be interested to see if the Columbus Blue Jackets are really going to try and acquire Matt Duchesne. Over with the Ottawa Senators, uh, there have been some talks saying that the Ottawa Senators may wind up having to deal Alex Brinkett and the Detroit Red Wings might be a good fit for him. Now, I would not disagree that the Brinkett would not be a good fit for Detroit. The Red Wings just moved Tyler Bertuzzi at the trade line. They could definitely use another top six guy to fit into that role. Guys like Perron and Kubelik only have a year left on their deal, so... Getting a guy like Alex Debrinkit, I would think, would be a huge move for the Detroit Red Wings and would definitely help that team. But if I'm Ottawa, I'm not trying to trade Debrinkit for the starters. Uh, first, I would try and extend him onto a long-term deal. I think Debrinkit, while he hasn't done overly great this year, I mean, he had a career-high 41 goals and 78 points last year in 82 games and had a down year this year having 27 goals and 66 points in 82 games, so a little bit of a lower point total this year, but still, he looks extremely talented, and I think re-signing him to the right type of deal would be good for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, even if they could try and sign him to something like what the Jackets did with Lionel last year, where it's not an overly long-term, like a six to eight year extension, but they were still able to lock him up on like a four year, $8.7 million deal. Now I'm not saying the Brink is going to get that exact deal, but if they could sign him to like a th four to five year deal at around like nine, nine and a half, maybe 10 million, I would still take that if I was the auto senator. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see, but if he's only willing to take his qualifying offer, or only sign a one-year deal and walk straight to free agency, then I think the Senators would definitely have to at least consider the possibility of moving an Alex to Brinkett. Now, if they were to move an Alex to Brinkett, I don't think they would be looking for a futures package. Uh, the Hawks trained to Brinkett to Ottawa last offseason. They were able to get a first-round pick, seventh overall, plus a second and third-round pick. Now, if I'm Ottawa and training the Brinkett, they're just coming out of a rebuild. They do not want to stockpile more draft capital unless it's going to help them get other players in the future. Uh, I will most likely be trying to improve that team right now. So if the Brinkett does wind up being a trade chip for the Ottawa Senators and does wind up being dealt by the Ottawa Senators, then I would think that they will probably at least try and get some younger players, maybe a young top six forward, a young prospect, and maybe like one draft pick would be my guess. If they do have to trade the Brinkett, I would first say not a futures package, not going to try and just get draft capital. I will try and get at least some help for their offense that can help right now. And also, I would most likely try and trade him back to the Western Conference. I'm not going to try and trade him to a division rival who they were going to see three to four times a year. So, in my opinion, sign to bring it, even if it's like a four to five year extension instead of a seven to eight year extension, try and sign to bring it. If he's only willing to accept a, like a one or two year deal, to remain with the Ottawa Senators, uh, or accept his qualifying offer, then you at least have to consider moving him. And if you consider moving him, then I will not try and get a futures package. They've already had enough rebuilding. If you do move him, you're trying to bring in another maybe good young forward, a uh, prospect who will help you in the next year or two. And maybe they do try and get a first round pick given the fact they don't have any first round picks in this year's deep draft after the chicken trade, but definitely going to be interesting to see. I definitely think that if they were to trade him, they would try and trade him to a Western Conference team uh, instead of a division rival who they play three to four times a year. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see, but Alex to bring it to Detroit, I would say most likely doesn't happen. I would say first, the Alors will try and sign him, and if he doesn't sign, then I would think that the Suns will try and move him to the West. But definitely going to be interesting to see. I would like to hear what you think. Uh, does the Brinkett get dealt, or does he remain with Ottawa? And if he does get dealt, which team would you find the most likely to acquire him? And lastly here, I want to touch on some goaltending rumors. Now, these are the five most likely goalies that I have picked out to possibly be dealt in the offseason. Now, there's probably some better goalies out there. These are just the five goalies that I see in situations and stuff that are the most likely to be dealt right now. So, number one, John Gibson. Currently has four years left, making a $6.4 million cap hit. Uh, definitely been a really good goaltender for the Ducks over the past couple of years. Did have his fair share of injury troubles. But with the Ducks being a rebuilding team right now, and 
Gibson in the prime of his career. It just doesn't look like Gibson would really want to remain with the Ducks, given the fact that the Ducks are going on the rebuild. And him being traded, very likely, I think, this offseason. I think this is the offseason where Gibson finally gets his wish and goes to another team, whether it be Pittsburgh, whether it be Buffalo, whether it be a team like maybe Ottawa or Los Angeles. I definitely think there's going to be a lot of interest in a guy like John Gibson. And even though his cap hits pretty high at $6.4 million, I would definitely think that the Ducks will wind up finding a trade for him. Number two, Carter Hart. Uh, as we talked about before, Philadelphia is heading towards a rebuild. Carter Hart's going to be a year away from restricted free agency. Currently has a $3.98 million cap hit, so not overly bad. Uh, he's actually put up some pretty good numbers over the past couple of seasons, showing that he can be an NHL starter. And I think if he doesn't really want to sign an extension, the Flyers will definitely try and find a move for him, whether it be a team like the Vancouver Canucks or the Ottawa Senators or the Pittsburgh Penguins or any teams that really need a good young starting goaltender. I think they would all have interest in a guy like Carter Hart. So in my opinion, I would definitely think Carter Hart is a very likely trade target to happen this year. Three would be Karel Vejmelka in Arizona. Uh, Vigmelka's done extremely well on a terrible Arizona Coyotes team, keeping them in a lot of games that they should not be in. He currently has two years left on his deal at $2.75 million, and even though his stats aren't great, for uh, playing on an extremely bad team in Arizona, they are not all that bad. So, in my opinion, Vigmelka will definitely draw interest from a ton of places. His cap it isn't even too bad at $2.75 million. So, I would definitely think there would be a ton of teams interested. And given the fact that Arizona is rebuilding and looking for any sort of draft capital they can get in return, and given Vegmelka has a really good value right now, I would think Vegmelka most likely does wind up getting dealt this offseason. Uh, number four, I would say Dan Vladar in Calgary. We saw in the Flames' last game of the season, Prospect Wolf get into his first NHL start. And Wolf looked like an extremely good goaltender. He's been playing over in the AHL. He's been AHL goalie of the year the past couple of seasons. He looks really good in the AHL playoffs right now. So in my opinion, Wolf has to be on the NHL roster next year. So if they have Wolf, I do not believe they're going to try and trade Markstrom, even though he has a bit of a down year. He's still an extremely good ta starter and could definitely mentor Wolf. They're going to have to find someone else to trade. And in my opinion, that would be Vladar. Vladar has definitely shown he can be a starter in the NHL level. Uh, the Flames just have really good goaltending depth, so in my opinion, they would try and trade him. He's currently about to start a two-year, $2.2 million extension, so I don't think it would be extremely hard to trade him, and Vladar would have extremely high value. So for a team who's looking for a starter for the next couple of seasons, or at least a tandem goaltender who can play a 1A role, I think Vladar would be an extremely good option and with Wolf needing to start I think there's a very very good likelihood Vladar winds up being dealt and lastly Mackenzie Blackwood in New Jersey now Blackwood has a 2.8 million dollar cap but right now is currently a pending restricted free agent has been a okay backup with the New Jersey Devils over the past couple of seasons definitely dealt with his fair share of injuries but as a goaltender who could definitely still be a good tandem goalie in my opinion I think he could definitely be dealt after not playing overly well in the first two games, Vanacek was placed as the backup and they started Kyrie Schmid in the playoffs in Game 3 and 4 against the Rangers. Schmid got them both the wins to send it back to Jersey in a 2-all series. So at the moment, it looks like Schmid will probably make the initial roster next year, maybe with Vanacek. So at that point, there's no real room on that roster for Mackenzie Blackwood. So for a team who's looking for a backup goalie or even one of those younger teams like an Anaheim Ducks or Arizona Coyotes or a Chicago Blackhawks who are looking for someone who can help them over the next couple of years, I think Blackwood would definitely be a good option for them. So in my opinion, I think Blackwood's a very likely trade candidate with Schmid showing that he can be a really good NHL backup at least. Uh, Vladar looks like a really good trade option with Wolf needing to come into the NHL, Markstrom still being a good goaltender. With both of those guys still there, it just looks like Vladars might be boxed out for next year, and the Flames should definitely get a huge return for him. Starter in Arizona, Vigmelka, should be a, definitely a trade option. There's been a lot of talk about him over the last little while. And with the Coyotes trying to get as much picks as they can for good value players, Vigmelka might be one of their better options, trade options for this offseason. Carter Hart in Philadelphia, especially given the fact that the Flyers are about to start a rebuild, I don't think Hart really wants to stay there. So I think... The Flyers will definitely find a trade for him and definitely get a good return. And then finally with John Gibson, I definitely think that he's a good veteran presence. 
Uh, he does have his fair share of injury troubles, but on an Anaheim Ducks team who what hasn't been overly great over the past couple of seasons, I think he could definitely be really good. So, in my opinion, those are the top five goalies, in my opinion, who wound up being dealt in the offseason. Uh, there's definitely a couple of other guys who could possibly be dealt, like a Thatcher Demko in Vancouver, Robin Leonard in Vegas, uh, San Jose's Kakonen, uh maybe even St. Louis's Bennington. Uh, so there's definitely a couple of other options of players who could possibly be dealt in the offseason, in my opinion. But I think Gibson, Hart, Vegmelka, Vladar, and Bennington are the five most likely options to be dealt in the offseason. So definitely like to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Which goalies do you think would be the most likely to be dealt in the offseason? And where do you think they would go? Definitely like to hear your thoughts and your opinion on which goalies will be moved this offseason down in the comments. But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video and subscribe. I also do a blog, which I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.